Cleveland is supposed to be a place where careers go to die. But I don't think that's going to be the case for Michael Kendricks. In fact, I think his career might flourish and might prosper with Greg Williams there in Cleveland. The good old Browns, I'll tell you what, I'm intrigued by the Browns this year. I don't I don't know if they're going to win more than four games, but they're at least they're building a foundation. And Kendricks joins a linebacking core that's pretty underrated. You got Joe Schobert, the middle linebacker, and according to rlads.com, they've got Michael Kendricks slated behind Schobert uh, on the depth chart. Christian Kirksey, a really underrated outside linebacker, he plays the weak side, and the strong side is Jamie Collins. But the reason why I think his career is going to prosper here in Cleveland, his strengths are going to be maximized where they weren't here in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, you got to be able to cover. Drop back seven, you rush with four, your linebackers have to be able to cover, and that's something that Michael Kendricks is not really adept at. He's an A-gap blitzer. He times his blitzes well. He times the snap well. And he gets into the backfield using that quickness and speed. He gets to that quarterback in a hurry. But in Philadelphia, well, you're not asked to blitz a lot. So sometimes, you know, in the NFL, you got to be in the right scheme in order to succeed. And Philadelphia, unfortunately, Jim Schwartz's scheme is something that Michael Kendricks, he, he... He fits when Jim Schwartz plays him less and he's able to use his strengths. But when Jordan Hicks went down last year and Kendricks was forced to cover more, it was a problem for the Eagles. It was uh, something that really manifested itself against Seattle. That's when running backs and tight ends caught 11 passes against the Eagles and, and five of them were allowed by Kendricks got burned for a touchdown by J.D. McKissick. And after that, Kendrick saw less of the snaps. It was Corey Graham that saw 60% of the snaps in the postseason after seeing only 35 in the regular season, 84% in the Super Bowl. So Kendricks, while he had a great start to the year, once Hicks went down and he was forced to cover, that's when that kind of got exposed a little bit. And then by the time the playoffs ran, came around, he was playing like less than 50% of the snaps. Corey Graham was basically getting more than Kendricks. But in Cleveland, in Cleveland, they're going to let him loose. They're going to let him eat. They're going to let him go after quarterbacks. And it's going to work for the Browns. And Michael Kendricks, I think, is going to have a really good season, a solid season. And at the end of the year... I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, well, probably shouldn't have got rid of Kedricks. But if you understand the scheme, if you understand the limitations that Michael Kendricks has in the scheme, then I think it's that's how you understand why he was released. For the money that he was making, playing like 40 to 50% of the time, just not really worth it. But in Cleveland, he's going to play a ton. He's going to be unleashed. He's going to be blitzing. He's going to be hunting quarterbacks. And he's going to have a big season uh, for the Browns. That's my opinion on the Michael Kendricks matter and him signing with Cleveland.